Hello, welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. I have the white gloves again. People seemed to like it last time, so it used to be kind of a trademark with me. Uh, why not just keep wearing them? And once again, my hands were really dusty from handling all the stuff and the easiest thing to keep from just spreading dust on everything. The easiest thing to do was just to put these gloves on. So I hope you like it. If, if these silly gloves amuse you, the audience member, if they amuse you, it's worth it. Then they're a good idea. If you, if you think they're silly, then that's a good thing because then you're entertained, you're, you're amused. We have a, a new poster. Now, this is not an original theatrical Night of the Living Dead one sheet. This is a reproduction. I do have an actual original Night of the Living Dead one sheet, but that's a very expensive poster and I'm not going to hang it up here to, to get faded in the light and have Billy attack it. And also, I think it's a probably a couple inches you know, wider and taller than this one. So I don't have a frame for it anyway. But I'm thinking some people might not like the uh, semi-nudity here. I don't know if that bothers people. I don't know if that causes a problem. I don't know. We'll try it out this episode. And if it doesn't work out, we'll, we'll change it. But I like Night of the Living Dead a lot. It's actually my favorite movie tied with the original King Kong. The 1933 King Kong and 1968 Night of the Living Dead tie for first place as my two favorite movies. I love uh, a lot of other films, like I did a whole episode on Jaws, so you might think, well, maybe Jaws is my favorite. It's one of my favorites, but it's not my top favorite. This movie, Night of the Living Dead and the original King Kong are my two favorite movies. And it's been that way for a long, long time. So I thought it'd be good to have this poster. Also, we are, we're going to look at some modern horror characters, like slashers. And I didn't think it was appropriate to have Boris Karloff or Bela Lugosi or some universal more vintage horror. I wanted something more modern to go along with these modern characters. So, and also, I'm recording this Thanksgiving weekend, so I've had a little too much to eat. I'm a vegetarian, so I didn't eat any meat, but that doesn't mean I didn't eat too much. I ate too much. So much so that this shirt, which normally fits me perfectly, I, I put it on um, I was wearing something else. I put it on for, for this. It, was, it has a little... Is this the one? Yeah, it has little skulls. You can't see them on the camera. There's little skulls all over. Um, <laughs> I couldn't get it on. It, so I'm kind of sucking it in. I mean, it, just like a week ago, it fit perfectly. Now it's kind of... Ah! I guess I need to do some exercises <laughs> or something. <laughs> Work that off. But So this is Thanksgiving weekend for me. For you... Thanksgiving was a, at least a week ago. Um, so now we're in the holiday season, and I went to a, a business. Uh, it was a dry cleaner, and for the first time this season, I heard Christmas music playing over the speakers, and I hadn't, I hadn't heard that until just uh, yesterday. It was kind of a shock. I, I walked in there, and Christmas music? Uh, oh yeah, it's the Christmas season. When you hear the, the Christmas music playing in the stores, uh, then you know the Halloween season is really and truly over. You kind of keep Halloween in, in your heart through November. You, you don't want to believe it's over. And then even when you have Thanksgiving, it's still, you know, it's, it's still kind of Halloween. It's the fall. Then after after Thanksgiving, when it's all just 
red and green and mistletoe and Santa and elves and good cheer and sleigh bells and of course Mariah Carey singing and all the other Christmas songs. Oh dear. And then Halloween is over. You know that the great pumpkin has ascended back into the clouds and he's gone. Jack Skellington has crawled back into his cave and the Headless Horseman has galloped back into the woods in Sleepy Hollow. And it's, it's done. It's done. Halloween's over. Christmas time is here. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> now, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. We're talking about rest in peace figures. We're R.I.P. Or rip does anyone call these rip uh i call them rest in peace because that, I mean, that's what r.i.p stands for but you know we can call them r.i.p if that's what you want i don't know the little tombstone says r.i.p horror collector series and if you're going to look for these on ebay that's what you would search for r.i.p spencer gifts or spencer r.i.p horror figures so these big things were sold exclusively in Spencer Gifts in the late 90s. And they were, they were made specially for Spencer Gifts. Spencer didn't just you know, buy them wholesale. Spencer actually uh, contracted to have these made. And I spoke to a an executive at Spencer Gifts back when these were new. I was a reporter and I was doing, for some reason, I was doing a story on Spencer Gifts and I was interviewing, it wasn't their marketing person, it was um, someone higher up in the company. I don't know why I was profiling Spencer Gifts, what the story was about, but we talked about this series and I don't, I wish I had some juicy details to tell you. I don't remember any of it. It was just, you know, it was a job. I had to write a story. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 and type it up. Um, but I do remember that, uh, I that these were made specially for Spencer Gifts, that they were not a pre-existing thing, that Spencer Gifts contracted a company to make these. And it was part of a general push to try to get more horror stuff to angle the store in a horror direction and be known for like your your headquarters for horror merchandise um and that was unique so these came out in originally the first wave in 1998 and then there was a second wave in 99 and i think they were still available through 2000 but they were unique at the time. There really hadn't been anything else quite like these figures. And there really still hasn't. Not, not as a, a comprehensive set like these. And there's a lot more. You're going to see the, whole, the entire set. Uh, there hadn't been anything like that before. And just horror stuff, modern horror stuff in general, was still very new. We had just come off of horror being defined as Frankenstein and Dracula and you know, for decades in terms of merchandising not in terms of movies in terms of merchandising toys and stuff Matchbox had tested the waters with Freddy Krueger in 1989 if I have that year right I think it was 89 and they paid for it dearly it didn't work out Kenner had tried in 79 with the alien and that didn't work out. So here we are. It's like every 10 years someone tries this Kenner alien 79 matchbox Freddy 89. This stuff in 98, 99. Only this time it worked. Finally, the culture had come around to the point where it was okay to have toys of these characters. And it was around the same time that McFarlane started their Movie Maniacs line. I don't know what 
year that came out, but it was late 80s, around the same time. And that was one of the one of the toy lines that really broke the taboo and made it finally acceptable to have modern horror toys. I, I don't I can't remember a toy line like playthings, not model kits, whatever, but toys based on some of those characters that succeeded and, and were not pulled from the shelves or whatever before the McFarlane series. That was really the one that finally clicked and, and changed things and made it okay to make toys based on Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers or Jason, etc. And that was around the same time. I think the McFarlane toys came first. And then around the same time, these came out. And then over the next few years, Spencer would make all other things, especially for their store, but also bring in horror toy lines from other companies, McFarlane, but also other, other companies too. And until it got to the point where Spencer was like a, a horror headquarters, you, you would go there and there'd be a couple aisles or more, or a wall just full of horror, 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 not just for Halloween, but all year round. It's, but it is kind of like um, Spirit Halloween and some of the, not the costumes and masks necessarily, no, but the merchandise, the novelties and the toys and stuff that you find at Spirit for one month a year. Well, it was like that all year round at Spencer. And uh, I have fond memories of going to Spencer regularly throughout the year just to see the horror stuff. And then you had, you had Hot Topic come along. And I think they kind of took some of the momentum away from Spencer because a lot of goths and, and people who like that kind of thing were, were, would go to Hot Topic and, and, and instead of Spencer. And then Hot Topic started getting into more and more of the merchandising and so on. But these are not Hot Topic. These are Spencer. Um, they, they originally came out in 1998. Let's see here. Which, what do we want to look at? First? Let's look at Michael Myers first. See, I told you there's more of them. Here's Michael Myers. I can't see whether there's a reflection. <laughs> Can I? Let's see. I think he looks okay. I don't know. Here's Michael. Um, let's get Freddy out here. Here's Freddy. So here we go. Here's two more. How you like that? Okay. So uh, my memory, and this had, I couldn't find anything to back this up. My memory is that they came out in three waves. That we had Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger and I think Crypt Keeper. I think those were the first three, and then the next wave was Jason, Leatherface, and Scream. And then the third wave was Dr. Frankenfurter, The Crow, and a revised Michael Myers. That's just my memory. I couldn't find anything to back that up online. And they're all numbered. I think they are. Are they all? Most of them, if not all, they're all they're all numbered. They have a they have a little sticker. And this one says it's a numbered series of thirty thousand. But there are some Michael Myers figures that say a hundred thousand and the scream one over here says a hundred thousand so some of them say thirty thousand and some of them say a hundred thousand like uh, Freddy says thirty thousand Freddy here is what does it say seventeen thousand four hundred and four of thirty thousand and Michael is 1,389 of 30,000. I don't know how much stock you put in the stickers like that or how, how accurate they are. I suspect these are probably 
pretty accurate because they all have different numbers and some are higher or lower. Today it doesn't really matter. Who cares what number it is? Unless it was number one, I don't, I don't think anyone would really care. What are these things? <laughs> they are they are stuffed toys, basically. They're dolls. They're plush dolls. They're not action figures. They're dolls. Their bodies are stuffed. And their head and hands are vinyl. And I think their shoes are vinyl, too. And you, you push their tummy. And I think all but one of them has a, has a hole like that. where you can push their tummy and there's like a little clear plastic sticker. And you can tell he's been pushed. And if you push his tummy, this one, uh, I think you hear the Halloween theme, the John Carpenter theme. I'm not gonna be pushing him. And I don't know, this one you probably hear Freddy <laughs> say something. I don't know if it says what their what the what the sound is on the package somewhere. Well, we'll find out. I see it's made in China. Um, hmm. But they all they either have a they either say something like a you know a phrase that the character would say, or they have the musical theme. Or in the case of the Scream one, they actually have, Scream Doll has a voice recorder that uh, transforms your voice. So you say something, record it, play it back, and it's, I don't know, pitch has changed or it sounds robotic. Like the characters did in the movie Scream where they disguise their voice on the phone. And the Scream Doll does not have a hole in the window, and I think it's the only one that doesn't. It's interesting, well, not really that interesting, but some of them have round holes and some of them have oval holes. Like this one has an oval hole. And Michael, we just saw, had a round hole, and Freddy has a round hole. I'm looking over here at leather face, he has an oval hole. I don't know if those might correspond to when they came out or, or what series each one belongs to. And maybe there really is no separation of like series one, two, three. Maybe that's just in my head. That's just the way I remember them. At my local Spencer gift stores, it seems like there was a, a first wave and that was it for a few months and then there was a second wave that was it for several months, and then much later, Frankenfurter and The Crow came out in a new Michael Myers. Now, Freddy, this Freddy doll is a lot like the Matchbox Freddy from 89. And that one was a pull string. You had a string pull in his back. This one, you push his stomach. And the Matchbox one said a lot of different things. This one, I'm assuming he says one thing. It doesn't say what he says. But anyway, um, the Matchbox, I think that was a little bit fancier, but this one's pretty good too. And I think, well, I don't know. Um, if the Matchbox is bigger, about the same size. I mean, it really is essentially the same toy. It looks very similar. If you saw them loose, just lying on a table, you probably wouldn't know at first which was which. And this Freddy has some kind of a paper. Like, I don't know if it's a photograph or, or what. It's, or is it an advertisement for something? I'm not sure, but there's like a square photo inserted in the box behind him. Let's see, what's the best way to look at these? Let's, let's take a look here. So there's Freddy. 
These are so big, it's going to be kind of hard to get a good look and to hold them. They're so clunky and huge. So there's good old Freddy. Freddy Krueger, Robert England. There we go. These are very elaborate boxes. I mean, they're very nicely done. Can you see his hands in there? You can see he's got a... Well, can we see his other hand? I don't know. I'm experimenting with some dark blinds in, in front of this camera, but I can see I need to move it over this way a little more because we're getting a lot of reflection from the room back there. It'll take some trial and error experiment to see how that how that works. But gosh, these reflections are always a always an issue. So you can see right there, there's something behind him, like a photo or something. It might be advertising that TV series, but you know, this was after the TV series. That can't be it. I don't know what it's, what it is. Someone might know out there. There's a try me. There's a photo of Freddy. Now the Matchbox doll had a painting. And then on the back, they all have some really nice photos from the movies. And there's more to it than that. There's a flap that folds out. It's got a Velcro fastener. I don't think this one's ever been opened. Ah, there we go. So that's what it looks like. I don't want to bend it more than that. It's very stiff. It's never, it's never been opened before. So I don't want to open it wide. Um, what does it say? No one ever doubted that Freddy Krueger was an evil man. Wearing his trademark fedora, red and green sweater, and razor sharp glove, he terrorized the sleepy town of Springwood, Ohio, when local parents fought back and buried, burned, and burned him alive. They thought the nightmare was over, but it had just begun. Freddy returned from the grave, a bloodthirsty demon with a supernatural ability to invade people's dreams and kill them while they slept. With a wicked wit as sharp as his glove, Freddy Krueger's reign of terror has spanned more than a decade and made him the horror icon of today. And I won't read every one of these, but that gives you an idea of what they say. They have like a little legend. A little story of the character. So this is a pretty elaborate. This is an elaborate package to have this kind of fold out. They didn't need to do that. And why? Why would they do that? It's it's such an extra thing. There's really no point to it. There's no there's no need for it. Yeah, see, it was, it was, it was tight, flat against that. Now it's kind of open a little bit. That's the way it is with these Velcro, Velcro fasteners. Once you open them, you never get them closed tightly again. It's kind of like the old sideshow boxes. You know, when they ship, if you got them like out of the shipping case unused, the the outer flap because they all have that flap that opens up. The old sideshow, like from the '90s and early 2000s. Once you open it one time, it never goes back again. Or NECA, the boxed NECA figures. Same thing. Once you open that front flap, it never goes back flat again. Oh, okay, so... Um, that was Freddy. Let's, let's get Michael back out here. So, Michael Myers... 
As you can see, he looks kind of goofy. Hey, there's, there we go. That's a good shot of him. Uh, okay, so he looks kind of goofy. He's got sort of troll hair, but I don't think you can see it inside the box. I don't know what color that costume looks on your screen, but it's kind of, I, I have to call it gray. I mean, it's kind of blue, yeah, a little blue, but it's more gray than anything else, like a bluish gray, which is not, well, I mean, there's a debate what color was Michael Myers' costume. I think I think it's been decided that it was blue, but I, maybe maybe people are still debating. And I don't know if he had that. Did he have that shirt like that inside? That little sweater inside. There's his open hand, and this other hand has a knife. I think you can see it there. He's holding a knife in the other hand. And so after this one. Like maybe the following year, they, they made a, a another version that had bullet holes. So there were bullet holes poked into the fabric, and each hole had red paint around it, so it looked like blood. So he was riddled with bullet holes. And also he was packaged with the, the hand that's holding the knife. Was tied, so it was up to his chest, and the knife was up here. It was the same construction, it's just the way he was fastened in the box. The Instead of the arm being down at his side, it was up like this, you could see the knife. And he had all the bullet holes. And that version, I think, is... I think it's harder to find than this version. This is the original version. And I never did buy the bullet hole one, because I already had this. Maybe one day, if I find a cheap deal on a bullet hole Michael Myers. Maybe I'll buy it. I don't know. Just to say I've got the entire set, including that variant. So he doesn't look a whole lot like, <laughs> like the William Shatner 1978 Michael Myers. And that's a common problem. Now that artwork, isn't that, what, which movie is that from? Is that from 4? Halloween 4? That's from the, that's the poster art for one of the movies. And, uh, so the, I mean the artwork shows the William Shatner mask, but the movie doesn't have it. That's not what it looks like in the movie. I'm not going to open the back for each one of these. But all of them have that flap that opens up. I can tell here that he, this has never been open. So I open one so you can see the, get the idea that the boxes open up. Now, why doesn't he look more like Michael Myers? For a long time, you can get Michael Myers merchandise that actually looked like him. Even the Sideshow 12-inch Michael Myers didn't really look like Michael Myers. Uh, the McFarlane Michael Myers, I, I think that was better than most. But there was a problem with, with any Michael Myers merchandise. Don Post couldn't make, for the longest time, a Michael Myers mask, even though it was a Don Post mask they used in the original Halloween. And whoever had the license, was it Ruby's? I don't know. Their official Michael Myers masks were just awful. And there was something weird with the license where they wouldn't let you make an, a screen accurate Michael Myers. There, I remember reading about this 20 years ago. Everyone was complaining, why don't, why don't any of these Michael Myers toys or dolls, model kits, masks, whatever, why does none of it look like Michael Myers? There was something something about the licensing and their style requirements they that's what they wanted you know it's they they wanted it to look like this i don't know why i don't know if it was some issue with 
William Shatner's likeness or if they didn't want to favor one version of Michael Myers over another and they wanted it to look like a amalgamation of all the different masks. I don't know what their thinking was, but it was bad thinking, whatever it was. It was, whatever the reasoning was, it was bad. And now we're kind of spoiled in that. Most Michael Myers stuff today actually looks like Michael Myers, but it wasn't like that for a long time. I think, um, I think the Michael Myers doll you press his tummy, and I think it's the John Carpenter thing that you hear. The box is nowhere on the box. Any of these does it say what the sound is or what the phrase is. Here is the Crypt Keeper in a tuxedo. And of course, he's from Tales from the Crypt, the HBO series. And you don't, you don't really hear anyone talk about that series anymore. It's kind of fallen off the radar, and this character is kind of fallen off the radar. Because he doesn't have a... Well, he does. I was going to say he doesn't have a feature film franchise. Yeah, okay, he's got... There, there were two movies that were branded as Tales from the Crypt movies, you know. And he's in them, but... <laughs> they're kind of Mickey Mouse. He, he doesn't have a proper Tales from the Crypt franchise. Uh, like, with quality, like a... A series of anthology films with really high quality stories and you know a-list directors who would come together to do like three or four stories per movie and he with him introducing each one that's what there should have been you know based on the hbo show and the ec comic and that's not what we got uh and i don't know i i mean i've seen other things with him in a tuxedo i don't know when on the show he wore a tuxedo. There was an animated cartoon called Tales from the Crypt Keeper, and this might be sort of, kind of sort of based on that, although it doesn't say so on the box. Let's take a look at him. He's pretty good. I mean, that's a nice looking Crypt, crypt, crypt Keeper. And his costume is very nice. I mean, that's a nice tuxedo, given the format. His hands are cool. And I, look, he's, got, he's also got some kind of a piece of paper back there. I don't know what that is. Someone tell me in the comments, what is that? What's that thing back there, that piece of paper that's in the box? And this has got some smudges on the window. I don't think he's got a sticker, does he, over his chest? You know, I guess the costume probably made that impractical. And there's the Tales from the Crypt logo from the HBO show. But if you look at the side, it's got this The Crypt Keeper name that looks a little more like the cartoon. So I don't know if this was sort of kind of a TV character and kind of the cartoon character. I'm not sure. There's no cartoon imagery anywhere on it. It's all from the show. The live action show. That's a nice picture of him. These aren't meant to look like coffins, but they are kind of shaped like a coffin. I don't know if that's intentional or not. They do have a sort of coffin-like, like a coffin shape. Not the, not that kind, but you know, a, a real coffin that people actually use now with the, it's rectangular and it's got the kind of round top, the round lid, you know, it's basically, Basically this, this is the shape of a coffin. I think one of those is called a coffin and one of them is called a casket, but I don't know. I don't know which is which. Which one of those is a coffin and which one is a, ca a casket. Okay, what should we look at next? I'm going to save um, Leatherface for the moment. We looked at Freddy. Let's look at Jason. 
Now this box is a little beat up. And I, I know I, I bought all these myself at the store when they were new. And I remember I couldn't find a good Jason. They were all beat up. And this is the best I could do. But it's got some issues. The box is not quite as nice as the rest. I, mean, I beat up. That's a strong word. It's not beat up. It's but it's got a few blemishes that the others don't have. And all of the. Well, we'll, we'll talk. We'll just look at it. and We'll talk about it. So this. There's the name. It says Friday the thirteenth, but that. That is obviously the Jason goes to hell, Jason. And you see he's got bullet holes and injuries. And that's kind of what they did to Michael Myers in the second version of that doll. I can't tell what weapon he has. I think it's a machete. And you can see here, that's the Jason goes to hell version of the character right there. Am I wrong? I think that's what that is. That's Jason goes to hell. There's Jason Voorhees. There's Friday the 13th, the name of the first movie, Jason Voorhees. So there's the movie title. But, you know, <laughs> because of you, everyone knows by now that the, the rights to Jason and Friday the 13th are just nuts. <laughs> it's all messed up. And after a certain point, they start, they stopped calling it Friday the 13th like Friday the 13th, part this, part that, and they started calling it Jason. Jason takes Manhattan. Jason goes to hell. Jason X. Freddy versus Jason. It was all Jason, Jason, Jason. They got rid of that Friday the 13th title. And I don't know why. There was some goofy rights issue. And, you know, they, they, <laughs> everyone who's interested in this stuff knows that creators have been suing each other for a few years. Now look at all these photos though. They're from the first movie. That's from Friday the 13th where Jason is certainly not a, an adult guy in a mask, a hockey mask. He's the, either just a figment of that character's imagination or he's a a drowned boy in a lake, but he's certainly not, he's not that. So I'm, I'm really curious to open this up <laughs> and see what, what, what photos did they use in there. So I think we'll open this up because now I'm kind of wondering, are there pictures of the adult Jason in here? Wow. This is interesting. I mean, no, I mean, it looks like, correct me if I'm wrong, aren't these all from the first movie? Maybe the second movie, I don't know, but certainly not part three onward. And all of these are either part one or part two, I don't know which. I mean, I think it looks like part one to me. So it's odd that the, they're able to put the Jason Goes to Hell character on the front, but nowhere else on the box do we see Jason. As a young boy at Camp Crystal Lake, Jason Voorhees drowned when counselors were assigned to watch over. Did I miss a word there? Yeah, I don't know. As a young boy at Camp Crystal Lake, Jason Voorhees drowned when counselors were assigned to watch over, period. Years later, a rush of murders occurred at Crystal Lake and people came to the horrifying realization that Jason Voorhees had returned from the dead wearing his trademark hockey mask and brandishing a wide assortment of deadly weapons 
this unstoppable killer has terrorized teenagers everywhere for more than a decade. Jason Voorhees will go down in history as the most prolific serial killer of all time. And I remember another one said, uh, was it uh, Freddy, said uh, a decade. And at the, po at the time these toys came out, all these characters have been around, well, you know, at least the slasher ones have been around more than a decade. Not all of them, Scream had not been, but like Jason, Leatherface, Freddy, Frankenfurter, I don't know. They, they'd all been around for well over a decade, so I'm wondering what this decade stuff is about. But it's odd that, I mean, so the write-up talks about Jason and talks about him wearing his mask. The toy is Jason goes to hell. I mean, that's Jason goes to hell. The picture is Jason goes to hell. But everything else on this box is the original Friday the 13th movie. And no other picture of Jason anywhere except that one on the front. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. And I don't know if when you push on him, and he doesn't have a sticker either, um, when you push on him, does he go... Cha, 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 cha. Oh, it's what is it? Ka, 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 ka. Ma, 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 ma. That's it. Everyone, everyone goes cha cha cha. That's not it. It's ka, 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 ka. Ma, 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 ma. Does he do that? I don't know. I don't know what he does. Okay. Oh, let's let's look at Scream. I really like this Scream doll. I mean, I something about this just looks so put together it's very clean it's i don't know it's there's something very polished about it it's it's very uh, it, it 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 some of the other ones have a kind of a charming clunkiness to them but not this one this one looks very slick and interestingly this does not have a panel that comes out and it doesn't have a hole in the window. It is the Rest in Peace series. It's got that. And the only artwork is this one image of Ghostface, which is repeated on the back. And there's no other artwork. So I think the licensing for, for this character probably required him to be marketed more independently than the others. Uh, or so, I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe maybe it wasn't a requirement. Maybe they maybe they just um, thought that there'd be people who would buy a Scream doll that wouldn't really care about the other ones, and they wanted to push this as an individual Scream item. I don't know. Why not? Why not do the at least the fold out back? I haven't showed you the tops on any of these, have I? It just says Scream and the. Uh, side just says scream is hardly have room to even get get back far enough to get in there in the back as i was showed you it just has that one picture of ghost face down there and then all that right up blah 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 here's the bigger picture of ghost face still has the rest in peace tombstone still has the numbered sticker but they're thinking they're going to sell a hundred thousand of these maybe they did you can see this one has a voice changer so it's different in a lot of ways doesn't have the hole in the window and there's the you know it looks it looks more impressive to the naked eye than what i'm seeing in the screen here i don't think you're in, in, uh, this camera is really doing it justice um but i really like this one and I'm not a Scream, Scream fan, per se. I like the first movie. I've never seen any of the other Scream movies all the way through. But I, I know I like the first one, but I feel like it was one and done. There was really no need for more Scream movies. And I don't mind sending up horror movies in a standalone film, but to make a franchise out of it, it kind of... I mean... It's like the, how can I put this? <laughs> yeah, it's in on the joke, but it's kind of not in on the joke. I mean, that, that is, a, I, know, I, know it, I know it took this and ran with it, that 
this send up of horror franchises that becomes itself becomes a franchise it kind of joked on itself but that's not enough for me i, I feel like you know, when you have a, a standalone movie that's all about deconstructing the genre in particular particularly the idea of franchises um not just the genre but horror franchises to then turn it into a franchise and what's the point it was a nice satire and also a good horror movie in its own right one time i i like one scream i don't feel like i need two screams or three screams or ten screams or twenty screams and this everywhere you see the word scream it says as seen in the motion picture scream which the other ones don't say that and uh, it's got this weird little ghost face logo has this ever been used in anything else any scream fans out there have you seen that used in other things that ghost face logo and i don't know if there's a is there a fun world yeah there's a fun world easter unlimited copyright on this oh this is interesting so ghost face is a fun world easter unlimited it's copyrighted fun world easter unlimited 1993 and then it says in quotes as seen in the motion picture scream and that's copyrighted miramax 1997. Now, maybe i should read this it's kind of weird this it's the story of ghostface it's not the story of the character in the movie this is different this is worth reading the story of ghostface tm the face was originally designed in 1991 as part of a mask assortment for the Halloween manufacturer Fun World. The design was originally referred to as the Peanut Eyed Ghost, which later became known as the Ghost Face TM Mask. The influence for the actual design was the combination of Pink Floyd's album cover The Wall, Max Fleischer's Bitty Boop cartoon Snow White, and Edvard Munch painting the scream. Then in 1995, the look of the face made an impression on the movie director Wes Craven, as he explained on the DVD voice over as he explained on the DVD voiceover narration for Scream. He liked the idea that the mask was available in most any variety store, hence anybody could be the stalker. Craven saw the ghost mask in a house while scouting locations for the movie. It is possible that once Wes Craven saw the ghost face TM mask, it evoked a reaction that influenced the change of the original title of the movie from Scary Movie to Scream. If you look carefully in the opening scenes of Scream, inside Casey's house, the paintings on the wall are Edvard Munch inspired. The motion picture Scream has developed a cult following. However, it hasn't stopped there. Ghostface continues to instill fear as anybody could be wearing the mask. And I didn't know that Scary Movie was the original title for Scream. I'm not a Scream aficionado, as I just told you. I've only seen the first movie. Uh, so I wonder, is that why the Scary Movie franchise is called Scary Movie? Or is it just a coincidence? But they're talking about, this is all, this isn't the characters, this is all behind the scenes of how they, uh, how they came up with the mask, how they, how they found the mask. So I bet in order to make this at all, Fun World had a sign off on this. And definitely this as seen in the motion picture is, is uh, um, dictated in order to brand it as a movie character. That's what you've got to say. Because uh, that phrase is copyrighted on the back. And I guess Ghostface, I, I asked if you'd seen that logo before. Probably, yeah, it's probably on the cards for the ghost, for the, you know, the Fun World mask. I bet the tags have that logo on them. Huh. So that's very different. I mean, this, this doll is very different from all the others. This is marketed... 
I mean, there, there must be a lot of licensing compromises at work here and probably in some of these others, like the Friday the 13th Jason one. I bet there's um, all kinds of <laughs> negotiation that has to happen for some of these things to, to take place. Maybe Michael Myers, too. Um, probably a lot of them have some ins and outs with the licensing requirements where there's multiple things that have to be satisfied. Okay, so let's look at Leatherface. I wanted to wait with him. Oh gosh, he's a little bit bent. How did that happen? This, this is, this box has some glivets on it. I don't know if we're going to well, whatever. I mean, I, I picked the best ones I could back then, 20 years ago. More than 20 years now, 24 years ago. So here's Leatherface. And he does have the back that pulls out. He's, he's one of my favorites in the series. Now this one has uh, the tie outside the smock, and that always bothered me. Uh, let's, let's, they don't, most of them have the tie tucked in. This one doesn't. And I think I, I, I considered opening the box to fix that, but I, I didn't. So let's look at the other face. There's the title. Now, um, the movie title has chain and saw as two separate words. This one puts them together. The official movie title is the Texas Chain Saw Massacre, not Chainsaw Massacre. And you can see here he's got the tie outside the smock, which is not screen accurate and there's it looks like someone stuck their finger in here because this plastic plastic has been disturbed so I wonder if someone stuck their finger in there and pulled that out somehow I don't know but he's got blood on him he's been up to his old tricks and he does have a chainsaw there it is it's kind of small but he's got one a nice leather face. That's a nice likeness. There's a uh, movie art. Isn't that on the one sheet? I don't have the one sheet for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I think that's on the one sheet, isn't it? I've seen that art before. And this is Leatherface. And here on the back it's got images from the original film and thank goodness it is the original film it's not chainsaw two or three or three and a half or whatever it's the real legitimate original leather face I mean Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of those things where as far as I'm concerned there's one movie <laughs> There's one movie, and then there's rumors of other films, but there's one movie, like um, Jaws. There's two movies. There's Jaws. There's Jaws 2. And then I hear these rumors about Jaws 3D and Jaws the Revenge. I think that's just rumors. They're, those movies don't exist. Or Terminator. There's the Terminator. Termina Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And then there's these wild stories about all these other... Terminators, all these other films, and a TV show, and yeah, you know, that's I think that's some alternate dimension stuff. There's those other things don't exist. There's two movies, and there's Alien and Aliens, and that's it. the The franchise ended there. If you hear about some other movies, eh, you know, it's just hallucinations that those movies don't exist. Um, the Halloween franchise. There's Halloween. Halloween 2, and Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. And that's it. No more. I think I'm going to be, I'm going to have to do that with Indiana Jones, probably. I'll accept grudgingly that there's a fourth Indiana Jones movie. And the only reason I'll accept that reality is I like that Karen Allen came back 
it's another movie with Marion. And they and I like them getting married at the end. I don't that's fine. So okay, 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 I'll grudgingly accept that that movie exists. This fifth movie, a, I, I can already tell you it doesn't exist. There's there's no such movie. And it's not even out yet. So that, I'm like that. So with with um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's one movie. And I hear about these other movies. Oh, they don't exist. There's one Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's it. And then just wild rumors of other Leatherface movies. Uh, don't, don't worry about those. Those are just hallucinations. They don't exist. Now, I have another one of these. But before I talk about him, let's keep going. Let's get the whole set out. Okay, then these, this, this is the crow, and then there's also Dr. Frankenfurter. Get the crow out here. Here's Dr. Frankenfurter. Okay, these are the last two that came out, and, and there was, I think, some time between the other ones and these two. And these are the rarest ones. That doesn't mean they're the most expensive, but they're they're the rarest ones. I haven't seen one of these for sale on eBay. I, I looked at sold auctions. I couldn't find one. Um, this one, there was a boxed crow, and it only, it only sold for 20 bucks. Boxed one. So just because it's rare doesn't mean it's viable. That was a steal, 20 bucks. Uh... I don't know if this is the right time to talk about values, but people try to get big bucks for all of these. And it's really weird. Sometimes uh, a buy it now will sell high. Like someone will price them at 175 or something like that and they'll get it. But then other ones will sell for like 60, 70, 80 dollars. That's most of them, you know, boxed, unused and everything. Are in the sixty to eighty dollar range. That's average, but that doesn't mean every now and then someone doesn't get more money for them. And most of them are buy it nows, from what I remember. I did look at eBay. It seemed like almost all the listings were buy it now. I didn't see a lot of uh, you know real auctions with bidding. And I think that's what happened to the crow. I think that was an auction where people bid on it. So maybe that was a problem. I don't know how many people are looking for these. So maybe is it, buy it now is probably the way to go if you're trying to sell one of these. Because I don't know that in a particular week there's going to be that many people searching for them. You're probably going to end up giving it away. Which is what happened with that crow that's I found in the sold auctions on eBay. It was the only crow. There's none listed currently. There was that one sold auction. It was really cheap, and there were, were none of these Frankenfurters current or sold. But I know over the years, I haven't seen a whole lot of these two. So, um, which one should we look at first? Let's put him aside for the moment. Okay, here is Eric Draven, The Crow. Once again, a franchise where there's only one movie. There's one Crow movie. N no other ones exist. You might have heard rumors of other ones. There's one crow movie. And this, is, that is a, an amazing likeness. Uh, that, that's, these last two are much more serious and proportioned. They don't have the big doll-like head of the other ones. They're not as dollish. They're more action figure-like. They're much more serious in the way they're designed. Um, I'm wondering if the, uh, yeah, I'm not going to open that. I'm, I'm wondering what they say about this one. If they talk about the movie and the production and what happened, or if they, or if they just talk about the character. I don't know. We'll leave that a mystery. The, the crow is shrouded in mystery anyway, so that's appropriate. Let's, uh, let's look at him. So you can see right there, that is... That's an uncanny likeness of Brandon Lee, given the format. If 
that were on an action figure, it would be fantastic. But it's on this doll. And look at this costume. Faux leather. Which will probably fall apart. But it's not falling apart yet. Accessories like that belt. There's the artwork. And they're calling him Eric Draven. They're not calling him the crow. The, the movie's the crow. But their character is Eric Draven. And it's got a URL there. Scenes from the movie. Different artwork on the side that's different from the one on the front. Looking at that faux leather. I don't know. This 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 is more of like a PVC kind of leather, so this might last. This might last, whereas usually this kind of fake leather on a toy starts to crumble and fall off. Well, this is really neat. I mean, the and, and it, this also has they all they all have some kind of piece of paper back there. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. What is that? Someone tell me what that is. They all have that. There's some kind of a little card or something with artwork, the character-based artwork on it. What is it? Is it a warranty or something to send in or just a little mini poster? I don't know. But it's cool that it's got some extra little goodie in there. So <sighs> yeah, these last two are are much more serious and less toy-like than the previous ones. And here's Dr. Frankenfurter. And once again, this guy is... Uh, and I say a guy, I think he did... He did consider himself to be a male in the movie, I think so, if I remember correctly. Um, and he, he does have the sticker on him, but this is just a beautiful likeness. <laughs> well, that's interesting. There's a 2001 copyright, Spencer Gifts 2001. Uh, that's a lot later than I, what I'd read about, what I remember. Let's see. 2001. Huh. So did, did these actually come out in 2001? I guess they did. I didn't know that there was that span of time between the first ones and the later ones. So I'm thinking now, now I'm trying to re adjust my memory of these things. I think there was like... Uh, Michael Myers and Crypt Keeper and Freddy in 98. And maybe then Leatherface and Jason and Scream in 99. And maybe nothing until these two came along in 2001. I don't know. I don't know. Because um, they don't have... They don't have a year when they were manufactured. There's, it's more like the year that the movie character is copyrighted, and that could be anything. This is ninety nine, so that make that goes along with what I thought. This is ninety nine, so I think I'm on to. I was going to say I'm on to something. I'm not on to anything. I'm. I think I got the right idea that there was a 98, 99, s probably skipped 2000, un unless that was when the bullet hole Michael came out. 
and then uh, 2001 was the last two. So they were around longer than I thought. I didn't know they'd been around. They were in stores that long. Well, let's look at Frankenfurter. Oh, so can we get a good shot of him? My arms are getting tired from trying to hold these big boxes. I don't think this is doing him justice. That is a beautiful Tim Curry likeness. Yeah, it doesn't, I don't think you're, it's not doing him justice. What I'm seeing on the screen there is just not good enough. <laughs> that's a beautiful doll. That really nails his look in that costume. Just his attitude, look at his eyes and his face. And even I, I, the way his head's tilted back, I know that's just the way it is in the box, but it's, cor it's correct for the character. He, that's, that would be his attitude towards being a doll in a box like this. He would be unimpressed with that. And it does come with his black leather outfit. And I remember seeing photos of the doll in that outfit and it does not look good. Because even though these, these are more realistic, these last two, they are still plush dolls. They're not action figures. And that more revealing outfit doesn't work very well on the fabric doll. But he does have that other costume. So here's the famous iconic movie artwork. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. And here's pictures on the back for the movie. And there's nothing on the top of this one. That's interesting. It does not have the logo on it like the rest of them do. All the other ones have a logo on the top. It does have a flap that comes out. Oh, here. Replica of lingerie costume included. Is it lingerie or is I thought it was black leather? I guess that could be lingerie. Oh, free time warp poster. Do any of the other ones talk about a free poster? I don't think so. So this is the first one that gives me a hint at what that thing is inside. So I guess that's what they are. They're mini posters, I guess. This one actually advertises it though. And what, how much money did these cost? This one, $39.99, kind of expensive. They've all got their original tags. $35 on him. Wow. $9.99. 10 bucks for screen. Oh, that's interesting. $39.99 for Eric Draven, $29.99 for Michael Myers. I don't see a price on Crypt Keeper. $29 for Freddy. $35 for uh, Jason. So I bet these, you know, I'm trying to figure out like what wave each one came in. I bet these $35 ones are one wave. So what else? I said 35 for Jason, 35 for Leatherface, 29 for Freddy, 29 for Michael. I don't, there's no sticker on Trip Keeper, so I don't know, but I bet that that'll tell you right there what, what wave each one is with. And then 40 bucks, so 10 bucks for Scream, so I bet Scream. What year Scream? This is 1997, that can't be right. This was not the first one that came out. Huh, trying to piece together what these waves were. 
because I didn't, I did do some research on these. I couldn't find any mention of series one, series two, anything like that, but I know they did come out in waves. So this Frankenfurter is just a gorgeous, gorgeous doll. He's got rooted hair, he's got his necklace. And I remember there was a bunch of Spencer Gifts I had a bunch of Rocky Horror Picture Show merchandise in the early 2000s. They had bendies and other kinds of stuff. Um, they had some kind of action figures. I don't know if they really were posable or, but they were action, they're kind of cheesy action figures. But there was a lot of Rocky Horror stuff at Spencer. I think for a while they, that was their thing. That They were the Rocky Horror headquarters for a couple of years. Okay, so I wanted to show you this. This is another leather face. And I think he's 35 bucks. And I think the reason I bought him was because his tie is tucked in. That bothered me so much <laughs> that I had to buy another one just to get the tie tucked in. But here's the thing. I actually opened this one. some of the artwork inside. Images from the movie, some ghastly images from the movie. And then that poster art again. I think that's the poster art. So that's what is inside that box. But I, I'm sure I opened this. How did I open it? Opened it from the top. All right. Let us finally see one of these out of the box. This will be the last one to look at. And uh, he is not fastened in there, is he? Or is he? go through the trouble of taking all that off. Um, I don't know, maybe it's not necessary. We can see what this little card is. There we go. Now the mystery is solved. That's what the card for this one looks like. So they each have these little cards in them. I was wondering, what the what is that thing behind each figure? It's just this little card. That's cute. I think they added a little something in there. Like this. It should be like that. And uh, his, his chainsaw is removable. Okay, so I'm not going to untie all those wires. Some of them are coming off anyway. But here we can see, get a better look at this one. This will stand in for all the others. We'll get a better look at him. You can see that kind of wrinkled, old wrinkled, weathered texture on his hand. Here's his chainsaw. Yeah, it's kind of a stubby little chainsaw, but when you know, what do you expect? It's a doll. It's not an action figure. So he's kind of got a small chainsaw, but at, le at least he has a chainsaw. And it is removable. You can take that out. There's his shoes. So his shoes and hands and head are all vinyl or PVC, plastic material. But his body is plush.
It's a pretty darn cool toy, I gotta tell you. No, there's no wire in there. He doesn't have wires in him. He's definitely a doll. He's a plush stuffed doll. But I think he's cooler than a lot of action figures, actually. Uh, you can see all the blood, <laughs> all the blood that's splattered all over him. I really like these. These are big, cool monster toys. I just wish that there was a, a definitive series of universal monsters like this, of classic monsters. There are some, ch there was a couple of China dolls with the um, China head, like what well, am I saying, China? Porcelain. There's a couple of porcelain Universal Monsters dolls, a Dracula and a Frankenstein. We might show those on the show. I do have both of them. And they're licensed. They're licensed. Um, and they're, they're okay. They're kind of kind of crude, but they're okay. Uh, and uh, there's, for the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, there's a porcelain phantom of the opera doll, kind of a similar style. And uh, we had the uh, Travelers, is that the company? Travelers Dracula. We saw that, that doll on the show once. It was the giveaway for 2021. Wow, these boxes are... Is it in there? I think so. It's all... Okay. These are a pain to deal with. Yep, it's all back together. These boxes are so big so cumbersome they're hard to take care of it's hard to keep from bumping and not knocking them around all is always with a big toy box it's always hard to keep it in good shape just everything it they're they're difficult toys to to take care of in the box and keep them minty and nice because they're just so big i hope you enjoyed all that i have fond memories of going into Spencer Gifts years ago and seeing all the horror stuff and buying these dolls. And uh, I think these are really underrated, really cool toys. And they're, yeah, they're collector oriented, but they are toys. I mean, kids could play with these. They're not you know, so fragile or there's nothing hazardous about them. Kids could play with these. And I like that. I like that they're toys. I like that they're toyetic. I like that they're they're dolls. Most of them have kind of big clunky heads and they're kind of stubby limbs and like that chainsaw that was a little too small. I like that. But then I also like the Frankenfurter and Crow that are more realistic and, and more realistically proportioned and with better likenesses. I like that. So I like both. I mean, you get both in this series. You get a nice range. All right, well, this is kind of a long episode, but you know, it's, it's a lot to cover. So I hope it wasn't too tedious. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a good time out there in the Christmas season. <laughs> There'll be more episodes uh, between now and Christmas. So we'll see each other again. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Until next time. The one who dies with the most toys is dead.